beginning of the game to the kind of had to sit and watch for mm-hmm. the second half. What's that been like? Uh, it's been a bit of it's been a bit of a process. You know, we got the three big rotation going on again, so we're still trying to figure out, you know, the minutes and stuff with that. So main thing for me is just really just try not to be frustrated with that instead of, you know, just coming out, really just coming out and playing. You know, I really don't have anything to say about it that really phases me, you know, because I haven't been in the three big rotation before and I understand, you know, we're trying to figure it out. And we want guys to be on the floor at certain times and stuff. So, I mean, I just get in where I fit in. That's <laughs> that's my thing. I stay ready and I stay motivated. I stay positive to be there for my teammates. You know, it was a lot of frustration in the first couple of games when we first started three big rotation, but that was just a lot of frustration with me just personally. Um, I was in foul trouble the first two games with it. And then coming down the stretch, it was just a lot of things that wasn't going my way that I had to figure out on my own. So, Really, it wasn't any frustration with any type of rotation or anything. It's just like, you know, personal stuff on the floor with me. But the three big rotation and stuff, I mean, that's an everyday thing right now. And I just have to deal with it, you know. I can't <laughs> really get frustrated because that's bringing negative energy to the team. And I don't want to be that guy comes in, oh, I'm not playing, I'm not doing this. That's not me. You know, whatever it takes to win. You know, with – go ahead. When you are in a rotation like that, kind of what do you hear from the coaches? No, just stay ready. You know, some minutes aren't promised, especially in this league, you know. So you just have to stay ready no matter what situation you're in, whether you start and then you get put on the bench or whether you're getting brought off the bench. So really just staying ready and staying locked in mentally. That's why you guys see me on the sideline so much, really just in a good mood and trying to stay positive and bring energy to the team because, you know, you can make a, you can make an impact on the sideline too, whether you're playing or not. You know, so I just try to make an impact when I'm on the floor and off the floor. I try to bring my teammates up. I try to do the best I can to really just stay in that positive mindset, not just bring anything too negative to the team. You know, we already have our ups and downs. We already have some adversity, you know, dealing with the games and stuff that we've almost won and certain things like that. So really just trying to be like that positive person on the sideline, keep everybody in good spirits, and then make sure everybody, you know, you know what I'm saying, when your number is called, just be ready to go. But is there like something like maybe like defensively you can maybe like clean it up or just something on the offensive side? Oh, uh, are you talking about me personally or just yeah, the yeah, team? Oh, me just stop fouling. That's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> you know, um, I talk to the refs and stuff as much as I can to st- I'm still learning when it comes to guard, you know, guys in the post and little things like that. You know, like I said, it's a lot of shots that I can go for. It's a lot of st- stuff I can just let go, you know, and just get us into early offense on down the stretch. But at the end of the day, I'm still learning. You know, it's only my third year, I would say. I'm still taking it one step at a time, not really just trying to rush anything. I get frustrated here and there, but I mean, it's a process. So main thing I have to do is just trust it day in, day out. It's going to come, it's going to fall into place like a puzzle. Um, speaking of learning, what do you uh, learn when you go up against a, a guy who's been around as long as Michael Martin and all these guys? Are there like other players of that caliber that are just so experienced? I would imagine mm-hmm. they have little tricks of the trade that you kind of need to see up close yeah. right, to, to learn what they do. Yeah, they found their niche, you know? especially when you got coaches, you know, reaching out and touching the ball <laughs> and found their niche, you know what I'm saying? But um, other than that, just going up against guys like that, I mean, it's real good for me because um, going up against guys that has a lot of years under their belt, it shows me um, the certain things that I could be able to do when I get in that position as well. So just really just nitpicking and watching film and really studying the things that they do and studying how they do it, their body language, what they do when they're on the floor, what they don't do when they're on the floor, little things like that, you know, just nitpicking, trying to find the certain things that have gave them success throughout their career and try to implement that with me as well. Is there ever happen where you go up against, I don't know if it's all different, any experienced big man, do you see them be something very subtle where immediately you like say, okay, I'm gonna do that and this is gonna add to it? Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um I watch film on a lot of bigs in this league that really guard the pick and roll well. And just how, you know, they I'm I've always been somewhat of a drop big and stuff, but I want to be able to be in a position to where I can come out and at least help the guards when they're getting, you know, crushed on screens or anything like that, and just have the aggressiveness and the tenacity, just be able to be up there for my teammate, talk to them, let them know what side the screen is coming on, and also being up there on the floor lined up with them, whether we have have to blitz or I have to show, or if I just have to hedge in general, you know, little things like that. Really just trying to up my defensive 
game to where I can excel in my career furthermore throughout throughout the time that I'm in the league. And what was it like uh, getting Wes Hunt's self back today? Uh, it was just business as usual. You know, everybody seen him. He came in and said hey to everyone. Shook everybody's hand, gave everybody hugs. You know, we missed him. So he came back in and he was locked in um, from the beginning. You know, we went in, watched film, and he was locked in from the jump, ready to go. And that's just West Coast. That's just Coach West for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, what's it like when you have uh, a mistake that just generally speaking? When you say you make a bit of a mistake in a game and it's just over and that's like highlighted on the court, what's that feeling like for those of us who are like that? I mean, it's just a feeling of accountability that you have to hold yourself to and the team is going to hold you, uh, hold you to. Um, when it comes to that, you know, you really can't, you know, I would say argue it. You can't say anything. You just have to, you know, take it and figure it out. From there, you can't really just, I would say, have a negative outlook on it because if you do, I mean, it's just going to go downhill. It's like a domino effect. You say one thing wrong, and then everything else is going to come out the back. So really just having a positive mindset with it, you know, hold hold yourself accountable and really just, you know, take up from where you left off. That's the main thing. Learn it, learn from it and fix it. You know, that's something that I've always done, especially when I've gotten called out. You know, I get called out time and time again, but I mean, I don't really have a negative look at it. You know, sometimes I get frustrated, but at the same time, they're right. Because it's a lot of guys on this team that, you know, have a lot of faith in me and lets me know that I can be better, way better than what I've been playing and little things like that. So I'm holding myself accountable to be able to be better in all the areas that I have messed up in, for sure. Did it take time to learn how to connect? Because I just know, I'm sure all of us in our own experience, you know, we just you know, make mistakes and we just, you know, we think we get the attention. Yeah. Yeah, it took some time for sure. Um, I would say coming here after the trade, that's when like I for sure like locked into on how to actually, you know, I would say approach it, you know, but before that, yeah, I, I would cuss you out quick. <laughs> and, and it wasn't, it, it wouldn't be like on purpose. It's just like instinct, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, you did this. Well, okay, forget, you, you know what I'm saying? Stay over there before some other negative stuff happened in here in this <laughs> film room. But yeah, um, over the time that I've been in the league, I've just been slowly really just grasping the fact that, you know, you got to hold yourself accountable in certain situations, especially if you mess up in that situation, you know? So. All right, Gaff, let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Chris Miller. Hey, Gaff, earlier you said that you're used to this three-center lineup. Last year, Alex was the guy that kind of started the game, played a few minutes, and, and sat. And for the last two games, you've kind of taken over that role. Did you ever have any talks with him last year of, like, how do you handle starting a game but have to sit for the rest? Uh, I never had talks with him. I just always really was just – right there beside him trying to really just, I would say, motivate him, you know, because, I mean, the three big rotation, it is tough because some, one day, you know, you might be starting, playing back and forth, getting back in and stuff. And then one day you might be starting and then you're sitting for the rest of the first half and then start the second half and sit for the rest of it. So my thing is, you know, just really just being there for him, being a good teammate, trying to motivate him, tell him to keep his head up and just stay ready. That's the main thing. And as a follow-up, when you guys are playing so many guys, do you notice kind of the rhythm of the game being off, or is this just a byproduct of just trying to get guys reacclimated to the team? Mm, it, it could be a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, I really can't even put my finger on it, really. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that out there that we're trying to figure out as the game goes on, and, you know, it's a lot of stuff that we can fix, I would say. But um, sooner or later, we'll figure it out. You know, it's on us, not the coaches. It's on the players for sure. Thanks, Gav. Appreciate it. We'll go over to Neil. Hey, Daniel. Um, Tommy Shepard is a very, you know, player relationship, you know, driven kind of guy. Has he had mm -hmm. any conversations with you, you know, during this, you know, somewhat inconsistent amount of playing time for you to just kind of reassure you at all? Um, main thing he says is just stay ready, just like any other coach on the team. They, they really just tell me to stay ready because, I mean, everybody knows when I'm frustrated, they can see it. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not easy to uh, hide my frustration. So when they notice it and stuff, they always pull me to the side and just let me know 
to stay ready and just whenever I get out on the floor, do what I always do. That's the main thing, you know. But now I'm still, I'm like I said, I'm still learning how to get the full grasp of just like staying locked in, staying positive, and just being there for my teammates. Because I mean, playing time isn't promised. Playing time can happen and it can't happen. So at the end of the day, I just want to do what it takes to be able to help the team win. And if that's me sitting on the sideline cheering guys on, I will for sure do that. And I guess what were some of the points of emphasis during practice today to try and take forward in the next couple uh, games you guys le have left on the homestand? Um, really just, I would say, just like the defensive end and turnovers, you know. Um, I don't know. I forgot how many we had last night. But that's just the main thing, really just focusing and locking in on the turnover part of the situation and really just um, focusing on also not letting teams speed us up. There's a lot of teams out there that like like to switch one through five. There's a lot of teams out there that like to, you know, do a lot of stuff to Brad to keep him from touching the ball and stuff. So we have to learn through all those circumstances on how to take care of the ball and how to get the right people the ball too. Thanks, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Go to Wayne. What's up, Gaff? Uh, just was curious. You came out and dominated against the Raptors. What what looked so easy for you out there um, in that beginning stretch? Say that one more time. I said, what looked so easy for you out there in the beginning stretch? Because you came out and just dominated against the Raptors. Um, really just um one of the things JB had said when um we were in the locker room and stuff, he was saying just come out and throw the first punch, you know. And Brad would always follow up behind him. He has to start with the first five. So, I mean, I didn't want to come out and just let them throw the first punch. And then, boom, we're playing catch up uh, at the end of the first quarter. I wanted to come out and be up, you know, either by the time we make call the first time out, either they call the first time out or we do. But I wanted to be up for sure. And I wanted to come out and I wanted to set the tone uh, on the glass. I wanted to set the tone energy wise. I just wanted to set the tone throughout all areas that would help us win the game, you know, no matter the outcome that we had, even though we lost that game. I just wanted to come out and just be able to throw the first punch and let, you know, let the guys know that, hey, we came to play. So let's go out, whether you count coming off the bench or you're starting to come out and just play basketball. Thank you, Gaff. And we will finish up with Christos. Hey, Daniel, hope you're doing well. Speaking about uh, your pick and roll on, on offensive end, how, how would you, could you describe the level of communication with Bradley, Spencer, and the other guards of, your, of the team? Um, You said the communication with pick and rolls, right? Yes. Uh, really just um, letting them know how guys guard the pick and roll. You know what I'm saying? If we got a big that's in a drop, you know, I'm going to set the screen and get you to a position to where you can attack the basket. I tell Spence that. I tell Brad that, too. Um, I let them know where, you know, throw the pass. I let them know if guys are coming off helping from the weak side and trying to chop block me to keep me from rolling. And I tell them, like, open side pick and rolls are our bread and butter for sure as well. So the communication is there. Um, and we execute it all the time. Uh, we just have to really just be consistent with it. That's the main thing. But the communication is there. I talk to those guys all the time. They talk to me. They let me know how to set the screen. They tell me to make sure nobody gets up under my screen and make sure I just hit somebody. And and also after the, those two losses against the Nets and last night against the Raptors, how important for you guys is to turn the frustration into a motivation for the next games? Ah, it'll be real easy for sure because, you know, we came out and did it in the first quarter against Toronto. I mean, you know, we ended up losing in the end, but, you know, we turned the page for sure, letting all that frustration from the Brooklyn game turn over to the next page to where we can go for Toronto. But we got another chance when we come out and play Boston. We can for sure come out and set the tone and be able to come out with a win for sure. I feel great. <laughs> um, you know, it's a bit, it was a bit of a surprise in all honesty. Uh, uh, you feel a little under the weather you know, after a back-to-back -back and a little run down, but I was surprised when I found out I had a positive test. Uh, you know, turned into mild symptoms the next day or two after that, but for the most part, it was thankfully nothing nothing serious. Your family, your family okay? Yeah, family's doing well. Uh, my wife did, uh, you know, test positive, and she kind of was a day, a day and a half behind me in, as far as symptoms, but hers were mild as well, and Thankfully, the kids have been negative since. So, that, so far, so good. All right, that is what sports is like. Uh, what, it, what was it like for you to have to watch football? It's, it's hard. I mean, you know, it's kind of a unique situation being away 
at that time. And I think we, there's a rhythm to the season that we've all kind of gotten accustomed to. Um, you know, kind of the preseason buildup, regular season starts, you know, you get to the break and you know that's a time where you kind of decompress for a little bit. But to have it happen at that time just didn't feel right. Um, and, the, and to watch us play is – you're looking at it through a different lens, you know, where – um, you're connected as far as game plan. You talk to the coaches and the, and the staff and you reach out and touch players here and there, but you're not there. So uh, there, there's a distance, you know, it's kind of a weird dynamic, uh, but it also allows you to kind of look at it from a, from a different perspective, from a holistic perspective. Um, and, you know, you watch the games live, and, you know, take your notes and this, that, and the other, but it, it, it's, it's weird. There also a level of helplessness in, in a way, or yeah, or, I mean, to an extent, because you can't just make a change, or uh, you can't dictate a change, or, or substitution, or a play call. You have to trust that you know your guys are going to make the right reads and uh, have a feel for some of the adjustments. Um, you know, and I, I give those guys credit. I mean, they, I think they they've done a tr tremendous job under tough circumstances. Um, it's easy when you can anticipate, you know, if it were an injury of some kind and you had some time leading up to maybe formulate your thoughts, this was unscripted. You know, I go down, Pat goes down, <laughs> and, and JB is kind of like the next man up. So um, it's not easy to manage, you know, to, to kind of circle the wagon, so to speak, and and uh, keep the uh, keep things afloat, but it is it is what it is. And I, you know, I could give those guys credit for, you know, doing the best job they could. Maybe the 9.40 a.m. call. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it was tough because, you know, I think we all have responsibilities and we plan accordingly, and that changed, you know, instantly. So, um, you know, how do you, how do you respond? We asked that of our players when, you know, players are out with COVID or absence, injuries, what have you. Um, unfortunately, we're, you know, the staff's kind of still going through it. So, you know, we are, what, 46 going on 47 games in. And you know, we, we have our full roster complement. We've yet to see the full staff and roster, you know, in concert. So it'd be exciting once we get everybody back and, uh, and to see how it looks. How far is the staff down right now? Can't get back into practice. Well, <laughs> yeah, um, we, we've gotten guys back. You know, some guys in uh, uh, right now. Pat still out, obviously. Um, Ryan Richmond is still out. Uh, so those are kind of like the last two two pieces where we're, we're working on getting back. I understand that you need to move that they have to play. Yes. They have to be integrated, and yet because there are some sort of restrictions, they're getting six minutes for every time. You have to play a lot of people. Right. How does getting that back, how does playing, say, 11 guys, which you have to do, it's a, it's a challenge for sure. I mean, there's a rhythm to playing um, fair or unfair. You know, this game is about rhythm and some guys may get squeezed because you're, you're playing 11, sometimes 12 guys um, by design. And, and it's uh, choppy at times for, for certain guys in the starting group, knowing that you know they'll, they'll get their full complement of minutes, but they're not going to have those normal stretches. Um, you know, as TV Rui get away from maybe those some of those restrictions, um, I think it'll help clean it up. But that's when we may have to, you know, dial it back to a solid nine, you know, you know, nine and a half uh, man rotation, and it allows everyone kind of their 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 routine minutes and hopefully get a a rhythm, you know, with the groups that that, that are out there. Oh. He had to carry the, he had to carry it. Now that you're back. Right. Yeah. Welcome back. Thank you. Um, were you part of the film session today? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, when you guys have a play like uh, the putback by OJ, like, 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 like a big moment, and obviously um, you guys don't want to have that. Uh, what's that like in a film session when you have to highlight something like that? It's so bad. Well, I mean, it's, I think you have to take it in context. It's, that type, that particular play is unfortunate, you know, but we've seen plays, we've seen them throughout the season where um, it seems like a little thing, but it's big. 
You know, if that, if that type of action happens in the second quarter, no one gives it a second thought. Bad bounce, mistiming, offensive putback. All right, it's two points. But because it happens in that, at that juncture of the game, it becomes kind of the thing. That's what I don't want to harp on. Sure, you, you touch on it, you, you address it, um, and that you, know, you, you want to eliminate those type of plays, but that's not why we lost. Um, and I've said this plenty of times. There's so many other plays throughout the game. It's easy to look at the last possession, the last 10 seconds, and say, well, we lost because of that. Um, you know, that's, that's not why. Um, the runs that that team made, you know, last night crushed us. Obviously, we had to run, you know, our own run to get back into it, down 18. So, you know, I have to give our guys credit for continuing to fight. You know, you tie the game up with a minute 10. Um, it's a ball game, you know, you're back into it. But, um, of course, you don't want to give up, you know, easy putbacks at that, at that point in the game. But that's certainly not, uh, you know, the reason. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you you address it. I don't think it has to be personal. Um, I think at this point we've done enough of that where guys know it's, it's coming from a good place. We're, ty- we're trying to teach and clean things up. We're not trying to embarrass anybody. Um, you know, and I've joked with guys, like, we don't pick the clips, you guys do. You know, it, and they understand, they're professionals. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uncomfortable, I'm sure, to, to be called out. No one wants to be called out. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not personal. And how can we take some of the things we did or didn't do, you know, learn from it and grow? Uh, and when you do that, you hope not to repeat those same things. Uh, so that's the mindset. And I think most of our guys have bought into that. They're not concerned with, you know, this feels personal or uncomfortable. It's well, how, can we, how, how can we grow from this? All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Chris Miller. Wes, first and foremost, I'm happy that you're back and you're safe and uh, healthy, you and your family. Thank you. Um, I want to make sure I I heard you right. By playing 11 guys, you said this is, quote, by design. How long do you think this will last? Because as you said, the game is a rhythm, and obviously the players are, you know, trying to say the right things, but clearly everyone knows that, you know, the game of basketball is all about rhythm and, and finding one. How long do you think playing 11 guys will last? Well, I don't want to give it a number of games or a specific date. Um, obviously the medical side will determine, you know, if we can get these guys up to a certain threshold, you know, I think that it's an easier conversation. Um, but, you know, there's no other way to implement and, and reintegrate those guys without having to go through this. Um, you know, we talked about it before, I, you know, had to sit out for a few games that, you know, this certainly is not ideal. You, you do this in training camp, but these are kind of the cards we've been dealt and the timing's not, you know, it's imperfect. So we have to take the opportunity now because you think about, you know, we've got 36 games left to play. So it's, it's not, you know, not a ton of games. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's not. You get through the break and all of a sudden you have 24, you, you know, that's the tail end of the season. The, uh, those games really start to amplify. You know, when you look at the seating, the standings, uh, you know, one or two spots can make a huge difference. So that sense of urgency that we had at the beginning of the season, we've got to get that back. And to, and to do that, you need the, that unit uh, at some point to coalesce. So, you know, playing 11, 12 guys right now, but uh, we're going to have to whittle it down. And, you know, you talked about at the end of the game situations, making a comeback. Really, the story of the game last night with the middle quarters getting outscored 71-47. How do you clean it up? You got off to a good start. That's something that you wanted to get cleaned up. That got fixed. Mm -hmm. But those middle quarters really hurt you. Why? Uh, Well, I mean, obviously, the you know, last night, the turnovers crushed us. Um, You know, the... The urgency, I think, that we, that we had in the fourth, you know, obviously because we had to, you know, we have to see that throughout the game, uh, that, that, that mindset, that collective want, um, you know, where, you know, guys are on the same page, um, the energy level is high, but we're, we're connected. And I think at times when you get down, you become desperate. Well, we need that desperation for as close to 48 minutes as possible.
we'll go over to Neil. Hey, Coach. Um, just want to echo, you know, glad that you and your family are back um, healthy. I know it might be hard to say, but do you expect or hope that Pat and Ryan can be back before the end of this homestand? Uh, yeah, I'd like them back tomorrow, <laughs> but I can't speculate. You know, I think it's, you know, the protocols are in place and we have to kind of just wait it out. Hopefully uh, they meet those the, the benchmarks to allow them to exit the protocol sooner than later. Um, it, it's it's tough. I mean, I, Ryan's been away for quite some time. Uh, and, I'm, you know, I, I was uh, seven days, felt like a lifetime. But um, they're both doing well. And so thankfully, it's just I'm sure – uh, fighting that, you know, a little bit of boredom, you know, probably a little frustration, but um, they just have to kind of bide their time and do the best they can until we can uh, get them back. And for Rui and TB, is there a, you know, kind of set minutes restriction on them right now, 25, 28, or is it more of a, you know, fluid range? Yeah, I think they're both in that 18, 20 minute window. Um, you know, I think that's a, it's a decent number, you know, obviously we have to you know, figure out how that works for, you know, the other pieces involved, but, you know, it, to, to, you know, Josh's point at some point, the, uh, the minutes become crunched. And, you know, you know I think once we kind of get those guys up to speed, it, it'll, it'll work itself out and we'll have to kind of make some decisions as far as how we progress going forward. I guess, at least to me, it seemed like, you know, that was pretty much what they were at when they initially came into the rotation as well. Is there any kind of benchmark that the medical staff is looking at to say, okay, now we can, you know, push the envelope a little bit? Yeah, I think we're starting to get there. Um, you know, it's, there's no like definitive, it's more on how they respond. Um, you know, and I think we'll see that too. We'll have that discussion with the back-to-backs coming in February. Um, you know, I think we have three, you know, in February and see how uh, TB tolerates, you know, those will kind of determine what, what we do on the back end of those games. Thanks, Coach. Christos? Hey, Coach. First of all, welcome back. Um, my question to you is, how would you explain those ups and downs during the games, especially last night's game? You're starting pretty well. You have some uh, really bad stints during second and third quarter. How could you explain those ups and downs? You know, it's it, it's a tough one. I mean, we've seen this, uh, unfortunately, throughout the season where, you know, the emphasis in the one is to sustain our play. Um, and we don't expect it to be perfect, but, uh, you know, it's complete shifts in the pendulum. And how do we avoid that? You know, our spacing, our timing, you know, the turnovers, um, you know, defensively, you know, are we all on the same page? Are we all locked in? I think it's not just one, you know, particular thing or by one person. I think it's a, uh, there are uh, s- certain issues that, that seem to kind of resurface, um, but we get away from playing the certain way that, that we start, um, you know, it gets good to us. And can we, um, can we find a way to sustain you know, a little bit of success? Um, and that that's the challenge. Yeah. So I, it, it's tough because we think, you know, you can't say it's, it's one particular issue. Um, I think that some of those things compound themselves where, you know, you turn the ball over, of course, it's going to affect your defense. Um, you're not getting shots to the rim. You know, you're not getting shots off and you're not valuing your possessions. So, of course, there's a point differential. Uh, so uh, I think they are, they're all tied in, but it's not one particular thing that we can point to to say, well, that's the reason. And also, you one of the, your goals from the beginning of the season until now was to limit the, the bad habits on your game. How satisfied you are about that? Um, if I had to give it a scale, <laughs> um, I'm not completely satisfied, no, because uh, we've seen you know, some correction in some of the habits, um, and we've seen regression in others. Uh, so I think it's going to be a constant you know, uh, work in progress. We, how do we you know, find a level of consistency where these are some things, some standards that we hold ourselves uh, two, we hold each other accountable to. Uh, we don't deviate from that. I think if we can get to that point, we'll see, you know, an uptick in our consistency. Thank you very much, Coach. Wayne? Hey, Coach. Good to see you. Welcome back. And I'm glad your family is okay. Thank you. I uh, want to dial it back to the perspective. Um, after, you know, being on the sidelines and then you're watching it from home, 
is there anything that you can say like, wow, maybe I can implement this or things you might've caught that you maybe wouldn't have seen on the sideline? Well, I think to that point, you look at it differently, you know, cause I think when you're in the moment, um, you're trying to plug holes, you know, wherever you see an advantage, you, you try to take advantage of that. Uh, you don't like a, a matchup. You may switch that on the fly. Your substitution pattern may change your play calls. You know, you don't really have any control over that when you're watching it on TV. Um, so it's just more of a holistic approach, you know, and it's frustrating because, you know, you, you feel removed and, and distance. Um, and we have conversations with the, with the staff and throughout the day after the game, you know, uh, about the film the next morning. Um, they did a great job as, as far as streaming the practices and the shoot around. So at least I could watch and, and feel somewhat connected. Um, but you, know, you do try to find, you know, little nuanced things where, you know, you know, expanding a certain package for, for, for certain guys. So we toyed with some things this morning. Um, you know, I don't, it's not completely divergent for what we've done, but uh, just adding little wrinkles to certain things and, and maybe give us an advantage and, and put guys in different spots. And lastly, Coach, I know you're happy to be back, but how cool was it to see Coach Pat and Coach JB just get that opportunity? Oh, it's amazing. I mean, that's in essence what it's about. Um, I benefited from that, you know, in those situations where, you know, you're the lead assistant and coach is absent for whatever reason. Um, you know, he may get tossed in the middle of the game. He, he could be an illness and doesn't, doesn't coach a game. And you have to step up and kind of um, insert yourself into that role. There's no greater experience for it than having to go through it. Um, and it, it, you have a certain, you know, idea, you think you do, of, of how it's supposed to go. And this is part of my growth this season learning how to, you know, navigate some of the, the pitfalls and uh, the day-to-day, -day, managing my time, managing people, all those things, you know, it, it's in a small window, but that opportunity is invaluable. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Neil, did you have a last question? Yeah, sorry, Coach. Do you expect to have Kyle tomorrow? I do.